and have no disclosures. I'm going to present a case. It is a case that I titled A Tale of Two Tricuspid Valves. Of course, Charles Dickens brought us A Tale of Two Cities. We'll present two patients. Both have pacemakers. Both have severe tricuspid regurgitation, but it is, is it from the pacemaker lead or not? What is the mechanism? So this is the Mayo Clinic format or ASC type B format, and you can see uh, the upper left panel. Um, you can see a pacemaker lead in the upper right panel very well. And then you can see that there is indeed severe tricuspid regurgitation. But take a look from the 2D echo. Do you think that lead is the cause? This is patient number one. All right, here's patient number two. It looks eerily similar to patient number one. Once again, uh, there's a pacemaker lead present, you can see here. And there is indeed very severe tricuspid regurgitation. Is it from the pacemaker lead? Well, it turns out we're not very good at telling that. This is from a colleague of mine who will be presenting uh, here at this meeting, Dr. Grace Lynn, and um, uh, showed us that in 41 patients that had surgically proven pacemaker lead causing the tricuspid regurgitation, our echo lab at the Mayo Clinic, only in about 12% of the patients ahead of time predicted that the pacemaker lead was the cause. Now, when we did TE, it got a little bit better, and maybe about half the time when we do a TE using 2D echo, we're able to decipher whether it is the pacemaker lead or not. But what we need to understand is that we have to look at the, pacemaker, um, the tricuspid valve and the pacemaker lead in a different view. We have to look at it by 3D echo from the ventricular perspective. This is now state of the art, and I'll show you even more recent pictures. But here are our two patients. So here's patient one. Once again, this is an on fos view from the right ventricular perspective. Here's our pacemaker lead, right where the yellow arrow is. And you can see that it's clearly interfering with co this leaflet mobility. The rest of the tricuspid valve is co-apting pretty well. Not too bad at all, in fact. Whereas patient two, even though there probably is a little bit of lead impingement here, the rest of the tricuspid leaflets aren't even coming close to co-apting. So the pacemaker lead is here is just really an innocent bystander to a dilated annulus and functional tricuspid regurgitation. So this view on FOSS from the right ventricular perspective is a new way to look at the tricuspid valve. And um, our colleagues down at the University of Chicago looked at it, and what they found is that depending on the location of the lead and using that 3D view, you can predict whether there will be tricuspid regurgitation or not. In other words, if you put it in the commissure, the pacemaker lead, you're good. If you're in the middle, you're good. But if you're against either the posterior, anterior, or septal leaflet, which occurred at about half the patients, then you would have more significant tricuspid regurgitation. And here's just an example showing that on the left-hand side, it's nicely in the commissure, and there's no leaflet impingement. But in this case, uh, it's against uh, the anterior leaflet here, and there is leaflet impingement. And you can see that the degree of tricuspid regurgitation, if there is leaflet impingement, was significantly higher if you're impinging on one of the leaflets compared to whether you were in the commissure or in the middle of the tricuspid valve. Now, we don't know if manipulating that lead will change the degree of tricuspid regurgitation, and we have no data that guiding the location of the lead at the time of implantation will reduce TR, uh, but it is something to think about. But let's just talk about anatomy. So this is the Mayo Clinic format, uh, and uh, just so you understand, the left ventricle here, right ventricle here. And look at the blue arrow. It's pointing at one of the tricuspid leaflets. And you can see a pacemaker lead here. So we'll time take a vote here if we can't have the audience response. Who thinks that's the posterior leaflet? Who thinks it's the anterior leaflet? Who thinks it's the septal leaflet? And who's just not sure? All right. Well, we've got a good spread there. And actually, the people that voted not sure, you're actually correct. You're not sure just looking at the image that I showed you of the 2D. And let's look at this and let's explore it just a little bit. The correct answer is not sure. So here is that on view, once again, from the right ventricular perspective. So here is the mitral valve over here. 
And here's the tricuspid valve over here. Okay, this is the posterior leaflet here, this is the anterior leaflet, and this is the septal leaflet. But depending on how we cut it, and here just, just so I label the anatomy for you, you could cut in that four chamber view the anterior leaflet or you could cut the posterior leaflet. And the two views would look very similar on 2D echo. So you really don't know what that other leaflet is in that four chamber view. All right. Um, so here, once again, is that view. This is our patient, actually, that I just showed you. And what you see here is that we're actually cutting the posterior leaflet in this particular case, right there. So we're looking at the septal leaflet and the posterior leaflet in this particular case. You just can't tell unless you do the 3D echo. And most of the time, it is the posterior leaflet that we are cutting in this four-chamber view, but maybe about 10% of the time, it's not. You're always going to get the septal leaflet in this, this four-chamber view. But you can cut either the posterior leaflet or the anterior leaflet, and that's something to keep in mind. And this is a nice paper from our colleagues, once again, at the University of Chicago, uh, that say that a comprehensive 2D and 3D echo is really pivotal to know which leaflet you're looking at. We're entering a phase where tricuspid interventions are going to become more and more common in the interventional arena, and we need to know exactly what the leaflet anatomy is. And it, it's, it's not, it's just, this is real. I show you here five different textbooks of echocardiography. Not Dr. O's textbook, of course, but uh, all the others. And lo and behold, let's look at the three different scenarios that are shown in these textbooks. Scenario number one in this RV inflow view, they say this is the septal leaflet, this is the posterior leaflet. Scenario number two says, no, no, this is the posterior leaflet and this is the anterior leaflet. Scenario number three in these textbooks of echocardiography say, no, this is the septal leaflet, this is the anterior leaflet. And the simple truth is they all could be correct. You just don't know for sure until you do that 3D echo. And here's uh, from our friends in uh, Belgium, a beautiful paper just showing us that as I illustrated in the case. Once again, in that four chamber view, okay, you could be cutting either the posterior leaflet as shown here or the anterior leaflet. And look at this, the two views on 2D echo look very similar. Most of the time it's this, the posterior leaflet that we're cutting but it could be the anterior leaflet. And then in this view, where we're looking at a short axis view of the aortic valve, what are the leaflets that we're looking at? Well, it could, it, it's almost certainly gonna be uh, the septal leaflet that we look at uh, in this view, but it could be the posterior leaflet and the septal leaflet, but it also could be the anterior leaflet and the posterior leaflet. So the bottom line is you really don't have a good idea until you do that 3D on FOSS view. And here's just a still frame of the example I just showed you, both in the four chamber view and in that short axis view, how you could cut different leaflets and you just won't be able to tell the difference by 2D echo. And uh, Dr. Senkovic and his group looked at this and they showed us that, you know, there's various percentages. You know, um, the group from the University of Chicago said about 10% of the time uh, you're cutting different leaflets here, but it can vary, it can vary. And uh, the important thing is you just don't know for sure. So this is a new way to look at the tricuspid valve, and I think it's very important. We need to understand that uh, this ONFOS view is now feasible by transthoracic echo in the vast majority of patients to get very, very nice images. Now, a couple of things that can help us, if we see the coronary sinus in this RV inflow view, then we know for sure probably that it's going to be the septal and the anterior leaflet that we're looking at. So that if you see that coronary sinus, that can help you. So 2D echo is not quite dead. You can use it. And it can help you differentiate which leaflet that you're cutting. And here, once again, in a, a patient that we're looking at the RV inflow, it can be difficult to tell. And once again, you could be cutting either the septal or the posterior leaflet in this view. And 3D echo really provides the anatomy to look at that. Now, is it truly a tricuspid valve? I don't know. We'll take a look here. This is a real case. There's one leaflet, two leaflets, three leaflets, four leaflets. It's a quadricuspid tricuspid valve, I guess. 
How many leaflets here? Looks to me like there's even more than four. One, two, three, four, and five. In fact, if you look, you can see, and, and uh, in this case, there may only be two leaflets. It's actually probably a bicuspid, tricuspid valve. And in fact, if you go back in the literature and look at some of the pathologic data, this is well shown in this large series of patients that had uh, autopsy studies. The number of leaflets, the most common, was actually four in the tricuspid position. So, uh, you know, just understand that you can't know the anatomy too well from 2D echo. And as Mark Twain said, it ain't what you know for it, it's not what you don't know that gets you into trouble. It's what you think you know for sure, it just ain't so. So I'll conclude. Um, understand that 3D echo will provide a true perspective of that tricuspid valve, and we should learn how to get these images because there's, we're entering a phase of intervention on the tricuspid valve. 